Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about application lifecycle management, agile and DevOps practices. And my name is Henrik Ullemo. Application lifecycle management is the marriage of business management and software engineering. The emphasis lies on the software engineering side, the having numbers and actual evaluations helping the business decide how to run a successful business using software development and engineering practices to better achieve the business goals. So it's often compared to product lifecycle management when it comes to industry and typical products. But in this case, we talk about applications and application lifecycle management from the initial concept to the end of life of an application. An overview over the application lifecycle management can be described like this. When we have three different areas, we have the governance, we have the development and operations areas. The governance here in blue color is all over the life cycle. It's from the conceptual idea to the end of life. The development really typically starts when we have a project or we have an initiative to do something and to develop that. And when we deploy that, we deploy that to the op operations side of things. And that's the green line here on the bottom. To further explain this a little bit, we can have a look here and see that the governance is really starting when we have a conceptual idea of what we want to do or achieve. And we typically we start a business case and, and we define the business case in those terms of a business perspective. This is what we want to achieve with application. This is the goals that we want to, to have from this application. And from there we, we typically start a project or project initiative and we develop something and we develop traditionally in something we call software development lifecycle management it's more of a waterfallish approach when we do things sequentially step by step uh, and we do the planning and we, we we plan the plan and work the plan to develop something and we develop it to to the operations and when we finish developing the project is about to close we hand it over to the maintenance and operations organization and the operations organizations are really responsible for making the effects of the business case so if if the project here doesn't deliver what the business really needs then it's really hard for the operations team to to really make sure that the effects are achieved so the application portfolio management team is typically different from the project portfolio management team. So, so it's it's quite different. And when we do the version two, it might be a totally different project or a different team doing that uh, development or that uh, version two of the application. That means that from an operations side and from a monitoring and to get the application insights we, we can have several different threads of uh, versions and it's it can be pretty complex in in the in the operations side to get the insights needed and uh, the if actually effects calculations and and uh, the information going back to the business to make sure that the, the actual business goal has been achieved and in some cases, in some studies, we see that the, the majority of the cost during the entire life cycle is really spent in this green area here is the operations area. It's we talk about numbers like 70 to 80 percent of the total cost of an application during its entire life cycle is really spent on the operations side of things. The traditional software development lifecycle management wasn't all that successful so a really bright group of people came together and created something that they call the agile manifesto it comes down to four different guidelines that we can follow and use as a compass to guide us into more agile way of doing things and hopefully a more successful way of doing things the first one being individuals and interactions over processes and tools. That really means that we should focus on, on humans and, inter, and uh, the interaction in between uh, people rather than just strictly following a given process or a given tool. The next one, working software over comprehensive documentation. 
really tells us that we should really try and focus on getting a working software to produce something that actually work rather than creating lots of documentation of something that doesn't really work or exist yet. So it doesn't tell us that we shouldn't create any documentation. This is just we should try and prioritize having working software over comprehensive documentation. Next one, customer collaboration over contract negotiations. Uh, that means that we should really try to bring the customer into the collaboration and discuss with the customer what the customer actually needs and keep the customer really close rather than creating a document in between us and saying this is the contract that we have this is what we're going to deliver and maybe the customer change changes his mind maybe the customer doesn't really see the full picture or understand the full picture so that is something that's really good to consider to keep the customer really close the next one, responding to change over following a plan. This really means that we should be adaptable. We should really try to, to embrace change rather than focusing on the given plan. Using this Agile manifesto and apply it on the application lifecycle management, we can have come up with something like this, the Agile application lifecycle management or the DevOps uh, lifecycle management. We have still have this governance uh, line here, the blue line here, but it's not divided upon project uh, management and uh, application management. It's just a long business line. And we have this development and operations really close together, closer together. And it's kind of like in the name also DevOps, development and operations really close together. And we have divided the various software development life cycle or the versions in the previous ones into smaller iterations or sprints as is sometimes being called. And as soon as we have something that can give the business value, we send it into deployment and we can have many different deployments. So this can be considered both as a project, but also as a line function, depending on how you look at it, because the sooner you can have something being tried onto the market, the faster you can get feedback. And that's really a core thing of the agile way of thinking to not produce the wrong things, but create the, f the good things fast and make sure that you always keep on doing the correct things. The DevOps life cycle is really different from the software development life cycle in that it's more of an iterative, a repeatable cycle. When we have this planning phase or planning, when we do the planning of the backlog, we structure things and we, we prioritize things and we decide this is to the stuff that we're going to focus on. We push this to the development cycle and the development is really tied together with test and quality assurance processes. And we try to automate as much as possible because we want to handle like regression testing because it's really all the manual tests is really hindering us from moving really, really fast. And we want to have it as much as possible automated and we release it to the operations and we do that by collaboration sitting really close together and removing the barriers in between so the governance side of things this bluish color here is really focusing on collaboration rather than managing and controlling it's more about facilitating than uh, actually controlling and from the operations we actually return something back and that's the monitoring and learning of what's happening out there with the software and we can push that into the planning phase and reprioritize uh, the backlog and the, the business cases in a more iterative way. That means that we can always adapt and learn and focus on the correct things. And if something goes wrong, something fails, we fail fast as well. But that isn't such a big risk because we can always reiterate and pushing new things and pu or even pushing back things really, really fast because it's most of the things here is automated. 
Looking at this screen here, we can see that we have a continuous value flow. We have this uh, graph here when we have value on this axis, and we have uh, collaboration and automation on this axis here. So we have this blue line going up all the way during the life cycle. So here we have a typical life cycle. We have the planning, the coding, the building, the testing, release, deployment, and operate. We can see the planning here is also blue. And in the planning phase, we can see that we don't get so much value from just the planning phase. But when we do the code and the build and actually release something in the build, we created some value. This is kind of like the extent that we had on the agile, typical agile development project. We do the planning, coding and building. That's basically it in the agile sense. Since then, it's been further refined and we also added something called continuous integration. When we actually do something, when we check in the code, we actually try and build it, but we also try and, and do as much of the te software testing as automated as possible. So you can do things like regression testing and we can make sure that we have good in quality. Even years from now, we can do the tests that we defined in uh, early on. And in some senses, we already start with the test driven development. We do the test before just because we want to make sure that we always test everything. From there, it's been also a new continuous term here, continuous delivery, when you actually release it as well. We, we do have, have release, release management tools helping us to do the release. And this is a green uh, box that's typically in the operations area. So we move things from continuous delivery and we also have something called continuous uh, deployment that's even further. It's, it's, uh, it's line isn't here, but it should maybe be here. Continuous uh, deployment all the way here. So we actually deploy it as well. But now today we speak a lot about DevOps and DevOps practices. So we can do all the way from the planning to the coding, building, testing, releasing, deployment and operations, all as a continuous flow. That means that we can give software to customers faster and from there we can have continuous innovation continuous feedback and continuous improvements business owners the business can really feed this cycle with new plans and better back backlogs and better input based on this entire cycle here next up uh, being project value and project risk in front of you, you see this iron triangle is uh, typically used in uh, product management to, to get the, the focus areas and to explain that we have three different legs that we want to stand up on, on the projects. We have the scope, where we have the features and functionality. We have the resources, we have the people, budgets and costs, so on. And we have the schedule, and the schedule is time and deadlines and estimates. And in the middle there, we have the quality and the risk that we want to, to apply to this. And based on that, we typically do a prioritization. We put the, which one is, we ask the, the stakeholders, what is the most important one? Should we focus on the scope? Should we focus on the resources? Or should we focus on the schedule? Which one is the most important for you? And based on that, we get a prioritization and we can do, use that to ensure that we get the right quality and the right risk. But looking at an agile way of doing things, it's a bit different. This iron triangle has been kind of like uh, turned upside down. We we can talk about this with this uh, fixed fixed uh, scope here. In, in traditional project management, like waterfall project management, we typically focus on, more on the scope than anything else. We create things like work breakdown structure and, and, and make sure that we have a really detailed plan and we have a really detailed schedule and resources, but it's more flexible than the actual scope because this is uh, kind of fixed. In an agile world, the schedule and resources are really fixed on the opposite. It's more, it's harder to, to change those because it's, we're working on shorter iterations. That's typically two, three weeks or something like that. When the schedule is already set and the resources is already set, the only thing that's changed is the scope that, that was included in there. So it's kind of like upside down from a traditional um, project. Regardless which type of project you're, you're running or which type of organization, I try to gather all everything together into one 
massive body of knowledge when it comes to application lifecycle management. This is an initiative that I uh, created. It's a wiki, wiki site. It's a knowledge base, it's a free knowledge base, base, no ads or anything like that, where I try to gather articles, disciplines and methodologies, descriptions and, and various products and tools helping out in the application lifecycle management and DevOps worlds just to further uh, enhance the, the 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 features and functions and see where this can go because this is something that's really core to me and uh, this is something that i really would like to see being further developed as well so in case you're interested in helping out just ping me and i will bring you on board so i hope this was useful for you and thank you very much for listening until next time have a great one